We're going to talk about PHP tonight, which I know is a shock to everybody. Um, but we're um, I'm not going to go through, so if you know some of you read the book, um, that whole chapter, there's a lot on loops and uh, string methods and arrays, functions, and all that stuff you guys know. You know, I don't care if you come from C++ background, or you come from a Java background, whatever background you've come from, from a programming perspective, since you're in this 200 level class, you've gone through something, okay, I hope. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail about what a loop is, or what this is, what that is. I'm more just going to explain how to write some of these things in PHP. I'm sure that I can go through every string method I ever listed in the book, and there's a lot more on the manual, and I'm not going to go through uh, every possible um, loop situation. So just so you know, I'm going to kind of hit some of the parts that you really need to understand about PHP specifically, uh, and be given a lot of examples where I'll be typing stuff up here and showing you guys things that I want to make sure you're aware of. Um, if you want to follow along, feel free, but I can't stop. If you have a problem, I can't stop, you know, if you're helping. But follow along the best you can. I know it makes it a little more interesting sometimes when you're following along and seeing it happen than if you're not. Um, so what I've done is I create this little uh, little page. It just says PHP Basics on it. This is it right here. And then what I'm going to be doing is kind of the way um, a lot of programmers do this. I did this when I was in the field. I had dual monitors, so it was a little bit easier. Uh, I know friend of mine, he's uh, works in the field every single day and he has <coughs> dual mon or triple monitors. It's awesome, it's really good stuff, you know, because a lot of times when you're doing PHP work, you're not just doing PHP work, you're doing web work or, uh, you know, HTML, that, that stuff, but you're also doing JavaScript, you're doing um, MySQL, and you're switching screens a lot and stuff like that. So we're just going to be doing this one. So when I update this one, it's going to automatically update that page and, uh, <coughs> and you, you can just jump right to the Russet page. It's open to you. It's just... Uh, Ross at v8wcnet.edu forward slash chili at shaper cps276 underscore examples and just go to php underscore basics and that will get you to this page right here. So you'll see the outputs. You won't see the code I'm writing, but I'll show you that on the screen. Again, not a big, big deal. Okay, so uh, starting off, and I'm going to also um, flip between, where my, oh, here's the book. I'll be flipping between the book right here too. So uh, right off the bat, just, just looking at some stuff in the book, um, the PHP, there's an online manual. I have a link to it right here. If you go to that, that's actually a pretty um, extensive manual. And I know that for a lot of stuff, um, when you go to these manuals, I know my Android's like this, they're really horrid. They just don't really explain anything. They don't give good examples. PHP actually does. Um, so if I just do like an array, just for something simple. On their manual, it doesn't really matter. And I'll just go to the simple array one right here. Well, it kind of um, shows you, you know, what the versions are. We're on PHP 8. It shows you how to write it. And here's an example of a right here. This is actually what's known as an associative <coughs> array. Uh, this is um, basically uh, indexed. And <coughs> it gives some examples. And it comes down here, gives more examples and stuff. And this is what I actually like about their main. There's a lot of examples in there. So pretty much if you have a question about something, pretty much if you just type in, you know, PHP array right into Google, you're going to go right to the manual. That'll be the first one every time. So that will help you out a lot, okay? Um, the book will help you out a lot too because I can probably get right to the point with the book as much as I possibly can. So just so you know, it's there. Uh, this PHP emulator I have a link to here. Actually, there's a bunch of them. Um, this one, they want you to log in and stuff, which you don't need to do. Uh, you can just go to another one. But if you go to PHP emulator, uh, just like that, into a browser window, it will pull up a whole bunch of PHP emulators. What they are is they're little sandboxes where you can write some PHP code, hit run, and it will output it. That's what they, they do. Now, I'm going to be doing something different here. I'm going to actually be doing it on the website and showing it how it's done. And the reason is I used to do the emulator for this particular les lesson right here. I used to do the emulator all the time, and then I had assigned the students how to do it on a web page, and I realized there's a big disconnect, because all of a sudden they're like, well, where's all this stuff, okay? So I stopped doing it years ago, all right? So um, I won't be using these em emulators at all. I'll be showing it how to do it on the actual web page, just so you know how we're gonna do things. But you can always do it. Uh, inside PHP, there's something known as a PHP INI file, and I actually have it um, sitting online. So if you go PHP, I think I call it uh, PHP info. And if 
that's not right. I'll put it before. No. Give me two seconds. Info.php? Um, yes, it was. You see it probably sitting right there on my, it should be right on my directory. So it's that one. Okay. That right there is the INI file for PHP. It's basically hitting the server and reporting back every single setting you have for PHP, including what the version is. You can see we're at version 8.2.1. And the one thing I did, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but the one thing I want to just take note to <coughs> is, and if you just do this little trick, you do control, you know, this little trick. Oh, it doesn't work in, uh, <coughs> in Firefox. That's fun. Oh, that maybe, oh, it's down here. Okay, I'm an idiot. There we go. All right. Um, so if you do control, I just did control F, and then again, this little black through Chrome it puts up in the corner. But you just start typing and it will actually search to the web page and find it. And this is what I wanted to show you is display errors and display startup errors. So this is what I had them turn on. And what this does is it displays errors, I'm going to show you this, at the top of your screen on your web page. Now this is in development mode. You do this when you're in development mode. We're going to be in development mode the entire time of the semester. What development mode means is, it's for the developers. Okay. So you want to show errors, you want to show warnings, you want to show all that stuff because that way you guys are going to know they're, they're there. Otherwise, it will hide them, and if it's a fatal error, you'll just see a blank screen. Okay? So you don't need to worry about doing anything. In the book, it talks about um, <coughs> this right here. This is no longer um, needed. That's why I kind of lined it out right there. But we have a couple, uh, we have three types of errors that you need to be aware of with PHP. <coughs> You have a fatal error, that's the worst. That is basically, it will terminate the application right then and there, and it will show you what the error is if you have errors turned on. If you don't have errors turned on, it will show you a blank white page, and that will be it. That's why we turn them on. Good luck figuring it out. You'd have to go to the PHP log files to actually look it up. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is um, a lot better. So that's a fatal error, okay? Won't work at all. What a warning basically does is it says, well, this isn't right. Um, I'm warning you about it, but I'm still going to execute your script as much as I possibly can. That's what PHP will do. Say, I'll execute your script as much as I can, but I'm just warning you, something's not right. You got a variable you didn't declare or something <coughs> stupid, you know. It's not like Java. Java is very strict. Java will just shut stuff down almost on anything. PHP lets a lot of stuff go, and it gives you a warning. And it says, well, I'm just warning you that. You don't want to have any warnings in your stuff either, okay? Notices are very similar to warnings. They're just a little bit lower on the totem pole, too. Um, and you get them um, uh, here and there. The, pretty much if it's a notice, it's nothing that's gonna keep the program from running. If it's a warning, it may or may not, okay? I've seen where it does a warning and then it runs a little bit and then just stops because it can't run anymore. I've seen that. Um, but sometimes it'll run the whole page. But you don't want any warnings to ever show up, <coughs> okay? So let me just show you what we have here. I can't really fake a warning so well, but I will fake a fatal error. I can't really think of a warning to, to do it. So I'm just going to require <coughs> some files. So this is dead wrong right here. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that. I'm going to jump over to my web page here. <coughs> um, go back to where I was, which was PHP Basics, and there's a fatal error right there. If I didn't have those turned on right now, you wouldn't even see this at the top. You would see nothing. You would see a blank page. And then you have to go to the log files to find out. That's why we call this developer mode. Because when you're developing web pages, you want this to happen because if you have a problem, you want to see it. But when you're in production mode or when this thing's been launched, this website, you shut that stuff down because you don't want a hacker to see that. If the hacker does something to disrupt your system, you don't want this, okay, because they'll see what's going on. But actually, it's kind of nice because it basically says, it's trying to tell you what um, the problem is. Now, this right here is kind of hard because it's like all the rest of them. It's cryptic, it's not always clear, and sometimes it's really weird, and you'll get to know them after a while. I'll show you another one in a minute. That's a common one you'll get. But what's really nice is it shows right here in bold the page that it actually happened on, okay? Right there, PHP basics index.php on line four. That right there, that's the whole file where to go, and that's it on line four. That at least tells you, hey, that's on line four, there's line four, that's it. Okay, so that's a good thing. Let me show you another one. I'll just do something like this. Okay, so if I do this, oh, did I save that? Yep, okay, do this. 
got to refresh. So every single time you send your file to the server to be displayed on a web page, you must refresh the browser. It doesn't know to do it automatically. It doesn't know you did anything. So you refresh the browser, there you get it. This is a, um, a parse error. So it's kind of like a fatal error. It's pretty much stopping things too. But what it's saying, this is one you can get all the time. Unexpected token echo and home blah, 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 line four. This is the craziest one because it's like, what does that, what is that supposed to mean, okay? What it means is that you didn't put a semicolon here, and technically you're supposed to put one here that we're here. You could probably get away with that. That's what it means, okay? Um, <clears throat> if I do that, do this, now we're back. Okay. I'll take this away. All right, so just keep that in mind when you're working with PHP, you're gonna get those types of, uh, those types of errors. Go ahead. Uh, sorry if I missed it, but how do I get that uh, example that you're showing so I can follow along? Um, it, it's, I do, I'm creating it on the fly because this is not connected to okay. this. Oh, okay. um, so you're just going to see me because I'm doing it on the fly. <coughs> do you want to go to the web page to see the output or do you want to see the, the file? I'm creating it on the fly so there is no example. Uh, well, I, I just kind of wanted to like mirror it on my own. Uh, you can build it in like five seconds. You know, but... Um, you don't have, you have to set it up with VS Code. Do you have VS Code on that machine? Yes, well I have, I'm like already linked, I've set it up, so. Okay. I just need to type out that stuff. Um, actually I'll show you how easy it is to type it oh, up. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. So you want to type out all this stuff right here? Pretty much. Okay, here's, here's this, watch me. Come here, all right. Exclamation point, you're gonna say Emmet. Uh -huh. Enter. Mm. It's magic. Okay. Now, the only thing you're going to need, and you can look this up, and you don't, you don't need it, is this right here. This is a bootstrap link. Okay. And you want to throw, um, I don't want to get rid of it. Okay. And you want to throw a little PHP block up there, which we haven't talked about yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you just put this up there, don't worry about this. And then don't worry about this class container in the body. You're pretty much fine on that. Does that help you a little bit? All point? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now, next thing is the PHP code block. So, when you're doing anything that requires <coughs> PHP to parse it, you must put it in a PHP code block. And you can put as many PHP code blocks on a page as you want to. Now, if it's a page where it's pure PHP, you can just start with an opening one, you don't even have to close it. But if you're on a page where you're mixing PHP and HTML, which is a lot of the time what you're going to be doing, then you basically <coughs> want to do a code block. Well, what is a PHP code block? It's just like this. this is, there's a couple of different variations of it, but this is the most common one. This is the one I'm just going to have you guys use. It's less than, um, question mark, and then PHP, just like that. And then it ends with question mark and a red line or right arrow, whatever you want to call it, okay? And all your PHP code goes in here. Now, like I said, you can have as many on the web page as you want. So let's take a look at this web page and see what I've done. I have one code block here, and I have another one sitting right here. Now, I want you to take a very, very good mental note of this. If you want to take a picture of it, that's fine, because one of the things I'm going to have you guys do is all your PHP logic needs to be above the doc type. It needs to be up here. I'm going to say it right in the homework assignment you get tonight. It's going to be put your PHP above the doc type. You can output down here. So you put something into a variable. Say you're spitting out a table. You write all the code to create the table here, and then put it into a variable called say table, and I'll put it down there. Okay. The reason is is because you get what's known as spaghetti PHP, and what that is is when people write it, they write. They sit there and they intermix the HTML and PHP all together. It's a disaster. It looks really, really crappy. Okay? You want to separate as much PHP from HTML as you can. Now, you can't 100% because the PHP has to give it something. Okay? But what we're trying to do at this level, and we're going to do it even more, is we're doing some of separation <coughs> of concerns. And I hope you've heard that in other programming languages. If not, you're hearing it now. Because your HTML is what's known as a view. Ever hear of model view controller? That architecture? Anyone hear of model view controller? 
and BC. Okay. <clears throat> well, we, I'll show you my new controller in PHP land at the end of this. It's like the last thing I should talk about in this course. But <clears throat> we're kind of going down that separations of concerns type thing. So what the HTML actually is, which is this, that's your view. That's your view. This is, I call, I'll call it your logic. I don't even feel comfortable with 100% calling it the controller because there's no model with it, but it's your logic for your control. So basically what you're trying to do is process everything here, <clears throat> display only what you need to down here. Don't intermix and have all your, like if you're doing a loop or something, don't write all your loop and stuff down here. Okay, write it up here, put it into a variable, I'll put your variable. You're gonna see tons of examples where I do exactly that. The other thing that I wanna make sure that you do when you're doing something, <clears throat> um, or the, the, uh, not that you do, that you think about, is eventually what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this right here and offsetting it to a completely different web page. We're not, it basically will be a PHP page. We'll be importing files in. And the reason we do that is because, again, separation concerns. So where our HTML will have very little PHP written on it, but there'll be a whole PHP page that does a whole bunch of stuff. I hope this makes sense to you, okay? So when you see what I'm doing tonight, I did this for a reason, because I wanted you to see it. I wanted you to see exactly what I'm going to be expecting you to do when I go through some of these examples I go through, okay? I'm going to write a lot of it up here. I'm going to put stuff into this little output variable. Notice I, I declare it as an empty string right here, and then I'm going to output it down here. Once in a while, I might switch just for an example, but I'll say that. The other thing is, is I went to the um, Bootstrap site. I copied this link. It's right on the front of their site. Again, you don't have to do this, but um, if I just type in Bootstrap again, this is kind of what we had doing the last assignment. Click here. <clears throat> I just copied this link right here. I just basically hit the copy right there, came over here, and pasted it right there. And then what's going to happen is it's going to get a little style. Okay, so I'll see if this is done. This might look silly. Yours might look different. You don't have to do that whole looking thing, I'm just showing it. All right. So I want to make sure you kind of understand the structure, though, because this is very important. It seems stupid right now. It might seem, why are you doing this? This makes no sense. But it will make sense as we start to further abstract <coughs> our logic from our view. Okay. So keep on going. So that's just talking about that. Every time we want to output anything in PHP, we use echo or we can use print. There is no print line or anything like that. It's just echo or print. We're going to use echo in this class. Okay? It's just, it's more commonly used and it's a little bit faster by like a millisecond. So we'll just do that. Statements. Ending statements with a semicolon. In PHP, you must end every statement in a semicolon. Now I say that, and you're going to see this PHP block right here, and you're going to say, well, you didn't do that one, and it works just fine. I can say, you're right, I didn't. Um, it's because there's just one statement there. So it's okay if it's just one, all right? Or if it's the last one, like if I do this one, and then if I do echo uh, test, again, I don't want to go to the doc type, I'm trying to give an example, uh, and I go this, and I go this, see how test showed up, everything else showed up, okay? Um, it's because it was the last one. <coughs> but get yourself in the habit, uh, and I'll do it to enforce my habit, okay, of ending your statements with a semicolon. You want to do that. If you don't do that, you're gonna get a failure. Okay, that's one thing about PHP. All statements must end with a semicolon, even if there's a line break after them. It doesn't make any difference. You've got to have that semicolon in there. So get in the habit of doing it for everything instead of trying to think about <coughs> what you do and when you don't. Just do it all the time, and you'll be fine. <coughs> Everyone good so far? Okay, variables in uh, PHP, very easy to write. Um, basically, it's whatever your variable name that you want to give it, and you start with a dollar sign in front of it. That's how. It, that's that's it. That's a variable in PHP. Dollar sign, variable name. That's it. No space. <coughs> okay. You can use underscores if you want to. Do not space them. Get you in a second. Um, don't do any of that. And, and my thing about variable names is this: um, make the variable be representative of the data it contains. Like if it's a first name, have it say first name or F, mine's short F name, but whatever you want to call it, okay? <coughs> so make sure your variables represent your data. 
don't do abstract stuff like I used to, like I, well, I didn't used to, I did it like one time because I learned how stupid that was. And just make like A, B, C, D and make Miko stop us because it's confuse you. All right. Um, <clears throat> make your variables be representative of other data. Don't leave <clears throat> spaces in them. Um, don't start with numbers. You can end with numbers and put a dollar sign there. Go. I kind of hate to interrupt the class for this, but I'm having trouble connecting to the Russet server. Is it have something to do with the fact that it's the same network? No, it has nothing to do with it. You're not connecting to Russet server, you're not displaying it on the web page. Yeah, but even if I go to something I know works, it just says the connection is timed out. So. Yeah, it's because you're writing HTTP. You're writing Russet hyphen eight hyphen V8. Uh -huh. Okay, if you go to the very left of that, you're gonna see it says HTTP. It's gotta be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then Russet V8. It's giving me the same problem last time. It, they, I don't know why they don't have port 80 automatically switching to port 436, but they don't, so, or whatever. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's <laughs> all it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so um, variable names begin with a dollar sign. First character in the dollar sign must be a letter or an underscore. The remainder of the characters can be letters, numbers, or underscores. <coughs> um, variable names are case sensitive. So variable and variable are two completely different things. Same with file names, they're case sensitive. I see this happen often with students. So what they do is they have a file name CPS276, or whatever, folder name, doesn't matter. And then they have another one called CPS276 with a capital C, or a capital CPS. Two completely different <coughs> things in the eyes of the computer. So just some examples, some PHP variables that you can do. Um, this is pretty much what I do, and it doesn't mean it's what you have to do, but I camel case. I'm a big camel case person, okay? But I definitely don't put spaces in them. Put spaces in them, you're gonna have problems. <coughs> Very simple to do variables in PHP. Any questions so far? Stop me if you don't understand. Understanding data types? Well, uh, PHP doesn't have a whole lot of data types, it just has a few. It basically has an integer, a float, which is also can be considered the decimal, but it's considered a float in PHP. A string, a boolean, an array, and an object. Okay, we'll be mostly looking at these right up here. Now the thing about PHP, <coughs> is uh, and then the resource, and we'll look at resources too from the, the database. But here's something I want to show you, because this is actually <coughs> really bad, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have <coughs> output, and I'm, it's equal to an empty string right now, I'll just put in my name in there. And then what I'm gonna do, so once I've done that, once I put the quotes <coughs> in there, output's a string, that's it. It's all inferred. There is no declaring it as a string or anything like that, okay? It's all deferred. So you just say equals. So a lot of times, if I want to make it a string, but I don't know what the value is going to be yet, I'll make it an empty string. I'll add the value later. That's how I defer it. Numbers you can defer and make it a zero. So whatever you you yeah, you do your variable name, you say equals. Whatever you put after that, whether it be a boolean, whether it be a, a float, whether it be an integer, whatever you put after that, it now infers that that's what it is. It's a loosely typed language, which that is one of the things, especially Java programmers hate about it, because they're used to having to declare everything. Well, Java compiles. PHP doesn't compile. It's evaluated every single time you run that script. So that's, that's one of the differences with it. Okay? It doesn't compile into a program to be run later. So it doesn't really care. But let me show you what else we can do. Tell me if you can do this in Java. For that. Let me show you what I did. I wrote output equals Scott. Scott's a string. So output, uh, the data type for the variable output is a string. Okay? I then came right down and I wrote output equals 5. Now the data type is a number or an integer. There you go. Welcome to PHP. Yeah, okay? I just did it. <laughs> yeah, it will do it. It doesn't matter. Okay? Um, it's because it allows you, it's not a good idea, but PHP allows you to change your data types on the fly. I don't recommend ever doing that, but it does allow you to do that. JavaScript does the exact same thing. These are interpreted languages, so it doesn't, they, they don't really care, you know? It's just gonna be reassigned to memory allocations pretty much on the fly. What Java does, as you guys know, <coughs> I can't talk about C++ because I'm not as familiar with it. 
Well, what Java does is it pre-compiles everything. So if you run a Java application when you're done with it, what it basically does is it <coughs> compiles everything down, sets up all its memory allocation, and so the first time Java runs, it's a little bit slower. After that, Java runs extremely fast, or supposedly those apps should run really fast. Why? Because all the memory allocation and are done, they're, they're kind of burned into that application, for lack of a better word, it's all compiled down, it's ready to go. Okay? PHP doesn't work that way. PHP is going to be slower, and it's going to, because it's evaluating every single time. And it's a memory hog. It absolutely is. Okay? So basically, it's, every time you refresh that web page and look at the result, every time you send a request to a page, getting something back, PHP is going to be rerunning that entire script all over again. Your variables are never remembered. So remember that. Your variables in PHP live as long as it takes for it to evaluate that script, which is probably going to be less than a second. <clears throat> and that is a very difficult concept for some students to understand. Are you getting too dark in here for everybody? Or is it good? Everyone's good? I'm so good. All right. <clears throat> I'm getting a little scared, but if you guys are okay, it's all right. All right, so what's, what's going on is PHP is evaluating a script, right? And it's evaluating um, all the variables and <clears throat> running through all that stuff. But when it's done, all that stuff's dumped. It's gone. Okay, and if you run the script, if you run the web page again, it's just going to keep doing it over and over again. All right, just so you understand how it works, because a lot of students, what they think is, they they'll run this, they'll run output equals Scott, they'll get something back, they'll think they can just call some other page, and we'll, we'll, we'll and we'll find output here, and it won't. Okay. So it doesn't remember variables. Once it's done. It dumps whatever the result is, sends it back, and that's it. Remember that, because that will confuse the heck out of you. So that's what you need databases for? Yeah, or flat files. <clears throat> it can write the files. It can do database stuff. That's known as uh, persistent data. Um, but it will all be dynamic. Okay. Remember that, because that tends to throw, especially, <clears throat> not nothing as Java programmers, I'm just saying. Um, Java programmers, that's a hard concept because their application is open and that variable stays alive the entire life of the application. When the application shuts down, then the variable shuts down. No matter how many pages they go through, PHP, no, it doesn't do that. So that may, that, that should, you should be asking some questions. Like, um, if web pages are stateless, which means if I have web page A here, and I have web page B here, <coughs> And B needs something from A, and I start on A, and then I go to B, well, how in the heck do I transfer any information over to B? <clears throat> They're completely independent. We're going to look at that. Because that should be things you should be thinking about. If web pages are all stateless like that, and they can't remember variables, then how in the heck do we transfer information? <clears throat> well, that's the whole point of a lot of what this is class is about. We're not going to look at it tonight, but we'll look at that. So that's what I mean by uh, loose typing. There are some functions there. I have this in that table. It's just for data type checks. Um, it returns true if the integer, uh, its value is an integer. What true means in PHP, like isn't, it's going to return a 1 or nothing at all. Okay, so it doesn't return a Boolean T R U E. Um, it returns 1. Basically, it's 1, 0. 0 is false. Um, 1 is true, but a lot of times it won't return a 0 if it's false. And no. It will appear to be. Um, here's where you can get types. So, um, because it's a loosely typed language, and because we can do that, we can always get the type of the variable before we do it. And that's where, if we need to have an integer for sure, then um, <coughs> we can basically do get type on it, see if it outputs as integer. That's, it will actually output integer or string or whatever, and then we can verify that. And then if that's what we have, then we can do whatever we're going to do with it. Again. Just because we can change things on the fly doesn't mean we should, okay? We should not. If your data type is gonna be a string, keep that data type for that particular variable <coughs> string. Don't change it, okay? Don't change it, it's just not worth it. You can cast, just like I have down here. You can do casting, that's perfectly fine. <coughs> but don't um, actually change the value. It's a, just a bad coding practice. Comments. Comments are very important in PHP. You should be commenting out your scripts. Um, you'll see that in some of the more sophisticated scripts I give you, I have tons of comments on, on uh, what to do or what they're doing. Uh, so the way you do it is two forward slashes, that's a single comment. 
and when I have forward slash star, <coughs> and then whatever I write in between, and I go star forward slash, that basically comments out a whole block of text. That's where you can do like a whole paragraph, okay? Um, or you can just write this for every single one. It's up to you. If you see in my book, I do stuff like this. That's a comment. So if you were actually to throw this code in, the, in there, it would recognize that as a comment. What a comment basically does, uh, what PHP does with a comment is it, when it sees this, it says whatever is written after that until a new line starts, if it's a single line, it doesn't want the line until it sees this, I'm just going to ignore it. That's what PHP does. Okay. And some of the things for comments are one, definitely get in the habit of commenting out your code and stating <coughs> what it does here and there, or at least on the less obvious parts of your code. You have to do every single line, <coughs> but you should have some pieces in there to kind of explain what's going on. I'll be kind of looking for that. I don't really have, I kind of have a gray area with that. Um, so I don't think about it myself, but get in the habit of commenting out your code. Another thing that's very important about commenting on your code is when it comes to diagnostics. Sometimes when you write a script, you write a whole bunch of stuff and it doesn't work and you don't really understand what the error message is saying, but one way that you can do it or figure it out is you comment out a block of your code, run it again and keep on commenting until you narrow it down to exactly what's going on. Now it gives you a line number, so most of the time that's you, you'll know right where to go, but sometimes you don't, sometimes it's kind of lying where it thinks the problem is, and commenting out your code can help you out a lot, and you just uncomment. Okay, I've done it, I can tell you more times than that. And that little system works out pretty well. <coughs> more than anything is like, well I come from C++, and It'll give you an error message that's like in a header file, and it's like line one thousand. It's like, what does this even mean? Exactly. Yeah, because it's doing it's going through the stack trace of files and it's finding something, right? But I think is that what's, what's happening? Yeah. I, I know in Java that's what happens, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's just it would do that. It's so annoying. Yeah, because it's it's telling you stuff. It can also um, tell you like that the error is at the beginning of the for loop because it will go through the for loop mm -hmm. even though it's at the end. PHP would do that too. PHP sometimes will tell you that it's on this line, let's actually on a line before. That, that, that's a common one it does, okay? So it, you'll get more used to it, but um, anyway. That's just a trick, they comment out your code. Oh, the other thing too I wanna to say about that is just when it comes to coding. Um, this is just my advice, and I do it myself all the time. <coughs> Don't try to code a big bunch of stuff in one shot. Code a little bit, test. Code a little bit, test. Code a little bit, test. You know, um, if you know that what you're coding works, the, the whole block of it, because you've tested it already, fine, and you can use it. But if you're programming something, you know, write a, a couple, I, I'm literally serious, like maybe, you know, three to five lines of code, and then test it, if it's testable at that point. Or just, or even if it's not testable, make it output something. I see so many students who come to me and they say, this doesn't work, and they hand me, you know, 100 lines of code. Well, figure it out. Because here's the thing. If they would have just done a little at a time, they would know exactly where the problem is. They would have found it like that. Instead, now they got a mess, and, and they may have five errors in that thing. They'll solve one, and another one's there, and they'll solve that one, because it only shows one error at a time. So that's just my advice. And you know what? I follow that myself. I do it all the time. I program a little bit, test, program a little bit, test, program a little bit, test. I mean, eventually I start writing my own classes. Like, now I can just use that class, and it's a whole different ballgame. But it's already been tested. So just, just keep that in mind, it will help you. Arithmetic operations. <coughs> um, that's just some uh, casting things on strings. Um, arithmetic, pretty simple. The only one I wanna um, show you is some more arithmetic. Uh, this one is one that's a common one that we do. X plus equals Y is basically saying x equals x plus y. So as, um, as long as we do the loops and we're counting, and so x will just keep incrementing based on whatever y is. All right. That's one that you'll see a lot. Um, same with this one, x plus plus. That's, this is the reverse of it, or not the, the inverse of it. So this is basically saying that as it's looping through, x is gonna be added, it's gonna add one to x. You could also just do x plus equals one. But use you so those plus. It's just a shortcut. <coughs> now, this is something I want to make sure you guys clearly understand. Okay. I'm sorry. Quick question. Go. Um, can you add a variable that's a string with a string? So like echo dollar sign output plus. 
it will con yeah, and then hopefully it will concatenate. Yes. Yeah, concat it won't. Concatenation is the dot. Okay. In JavaScript, you can, and that really throws things off. Okay. okay. PHP though does like to switch data types on you. Um, and so if you're doing let's let's do it. let's see what it does. Okay. So let's just do that. Uh, I'm going to basically do this. I'm going to just take uh, num, and that's going to equal five. And this is your question. I apologize. And I'm going to go uh, string, and that's going to equal five. And output is going to be uh, num plus string. Okay. Let me do that. Go ahead and save that. We'll come over here and go into here and oh ah this will probably have decided here, but let's let's try this. Uh, output uh, I, it doesn't really matter. I forgot to declare what it was, so I didn't like that. Okay. <coughs> What's that? It's under oh, string. string. Oh seven. You know what? I'm a liar. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that. Thank you. If I read the error message, I would probably figure that out. There. Hey. That's, I think, what you were sort of asking. Can well, you see what it did? You what? asked it. You asked the reverse of that. What you said, can I add two strings together? Yeah, like okay. if it was output equals and then you make a string, like the answer is right. plus. It, no, that it won't do, okay? Oh, okay. Um, but this it will do. That's so, that I, it was what you were asking, but I want to show you, made me think of that. Is that this right here, I have a number and a string, and I'm using plus. Well, because I'm using plus, it goes, okay, you're adding, that means that that string, you can't add a string, but because it's a numerical so a string, it contains a number, it's like, oh, I'll just make it a number for you, no problem, and I'll add it. Thanks, PHP, that's not what I wanted you to do. I'd rather you error me out but it doesn't. So keep that one in mind. Let's try this one. This can really be fun. I'm just hoping it works the way I want it to. Isn't that great? Five plus five equals 55. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, <coughs> what it did this time is I used the concatenation operator, which we're gonna learn about, which is the dot, and what that does is it says, I can take two strings and combine them together, concatenate them together. One's a string, one's a number. So it says, oh, well, since you're concatenating and one's a string and this one's a number, guess what? They're both strings now. That can, that, that can be a problem when you write a PHP script that uh, you know, has to figure out how much anesthesia you give to somebody before they put them down for a procedure. Might want to be accurate. There's a little bit of a difference when it comes to Anesthesia between 10 milliliters and 55 milliliters, I can tend to imagine. Okay. <clears throat> Just little gotchas that, that PHP people do. <clears throat> um, but when it comes to this right here, what, you, what this does is, it's true if uh, we do like one uh, equal equals one. As long as the values are the same, it's going to do what's known as type driver. It's going to say, okay, one's, you know, it just basically says, oh, they're both strings, or they're both numbers. Okay, so that's what equal equals will do. It's checking just value. This one is checking data type itself. If you do equal, equal, equals, then basically this is going to be false. You can't do a string equal, e equals a number. Just keep that in mind. Because other languages don't have the equal equals. These are our logical operators. Um, here's the ands, the ors. Right. <clears throat> Any questions yet? Am I going too fast for anyone? <clears throat> Everyone okay? If you're not, say, ask the questions. It's all good. <clears throat> all right. So, let's take a look at this one. PHP strings. This is nothing new to any of you, but... Um, this is basically, we can write a string in single quotes or double quotes, it makes no difference in PHP. In PHP, every single string, like almost every single other language out there, every single string is basically <coughs> the characters have a position starting at zero. So in this particular case right here, we have 
15 positions, we actually have 16 is our length. This is the same in almost every other, every other language I've, done, I've looked at. It's the same thing. But the reason it's so important is because this right here tells you what character it's on. And it uses that a lot when it's trying to search or get substrings. Now this is pretty basic. Um, here's string two, here's string six, um, here's string 12. So just showing you what it outputs and you can just look right what, what they are. So um, what it's doing is it's taking string because it, we declared string as a string. Okay, we're bad <coughs> convention here. But basically when we look at the positions, it's kind of working out like an array. And that's what those little brackets are. <coughs> so it just it takes the position number. And it will output the character for um, <coughs> that. Um, this is one that's weird. You can do this and actually change it, which is bizarre. Okay. So uh, if you look at this, let's, let's just do it. So we're going to go. <coughs> Str equals this is a string, okay? That, and then I'm going to go S, uh, str. Uh, let's see, zero, one, two, two uh, equals a, okay? And see what happens. Come over here, come here. That is a string. Okay, great. So what it allows you to do is it allows you, because it's treating it like an array, it actually allows you to change the string. So this was two, so if you look at this, it's a zero, the t is zero, h is one, i is two. If I go string two equals a, I change the i to an a and I outputted the result, which of course proved that it does exactly that. Other languages, you can't do that. You can do it with an array, but you can't do it with a string. Okay, PHP, you can. Why you'd want to, I don't know, but you can. And some of the stuff I try to show you is to show you some of the little gotcha things that it does. Uh, string link, uh, that will output the uh, length of the string. So that's what strlen does. So you just you write that in parentheses, and then you just put in a variable for the string or the string itself. Okay, it outputs 16. As you guys, I hope know, the length is always going to be one more than the position, because when you count positions, you start at zero. When you count length, you start at one. And that's fundamental programming from back Java, uh, C++. I'm assuming it does the same thing. If I'm wrong, you guys can correct me, but. Um, what's going on is it's looking at like an array. So there's 15 <coughs> positions, but when you actually mm -hmm. count the number of characters, we count from one. So just keep in mind that. That's why you always get that difference. <coughs> Sometimes people try to do um, string length, um, and they try to uh, get, they're looking for, the, not string length, but they're looking for the, the last one, so they try and go string length, and then they'll, which would be 16, and then they'll <coughs> put into the string with the array and put the string length in there, thinking that that's what they're gonna get, and they'll, they'll say no, it doesn't exist. Multi-line strings, okay? Um, you can uh, kind of run them um, <coughs> like, uh, like this, which is not really all that great. Okay, just this is a multi-line string. But the best way to do it is this. And I want to show you this. Notice here, Doc. And you're going to be doing this a lot. Now, this is actually really cool, though. So instead of doing this, I'm going to do. Um, okay. So it's not. <laughs> not switching for me. Okay. So I'm going to basically say str. All right. Equals. I'm going to do three um, less ends or left arrows, and then I'm going to write HTML. Now, I want you to notice something of what I did here. Here I wrote str, because I was just writing this. But I want to show you what happens. In fact, I'll try to uh, write what's hopefully it will do what I want. 
and then we're going to go HTML here and this. Okay, so we got that part. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write this is a paragraph, whatever. Um, and then we'll just do, uh, I don't know if Emily will allow me to do this. Yeah, probably will. Okay. So we'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll do uh, that. Okay. <coughs> One thing you should notice right off the bat is I did HTML here, I get all my syntax coding. Okay. Let me change that. Just for fun, let me change it to HT. See what happened? If you're doing a here doc, which is basically the variable equals, you have three of these um, <coughs> lessons right here, and then you, uh, whatever variable name you have here is in capitals, is it, it's a naming convention. Um, you have the same thing down here, this end bit. But what's going on is if I write HTM. L, at least in VS Code, like that, and of course I'm going to close. Oh, I'm going to close it the same way here. But you notice that the syntax highlighted showed up. That's what I'm trying to point out. This is huge because it used to not, and so you didn't have any syntax highlighting, so it was hard to decipher what's an attribute, what's an element, what's text, what's whatever. Here it's going to show you. So if you're going to make a here doc. Do one with HTML, is what I'm advising, because you're going to get your syntax highlighting. Or don't, <coughs> and just have a harder time with it. Right. Um, we'll just do this. Ah, come on. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to save that. I'm going to do this, do this, do that. There it is. So what I did is I wrote a multi-line um, thing, which is known as a here doc. The other thing you want to make sure of is that this is on its own line. <coughs> Don't do that. Parts error. Don't put anything else on the last variable of a here doc. Just leave it like this. So you start it up here, and then you end it here. Don't put anything else on that line. You can do a comment. So if I do a comment, I should be okay with that. But no other statements. Let's roll that. Oh, I said the wrong thing. That's what it was. <coughs> so, um, if you're doing where you got to output big blocks of HTML, that's the way to do it. Okay, it will save you a lot of time. Otherwise, you're writing a bunch of little. Quotation marks. The other thing that's really cool about the Hero Act 2, which I didn't really show you, but I will, is that I can do this, and this, and this, and this. And I can save all that, and I can basically come here and do that, and sure enough, it prints them off. It ignores quotes. It looks at them as, okay, that's what you want. That's another good thing to have. But let's do one other thing. Let's do this, where we go, um, I. ID equals like that. <coughs> it's not going to show that up. You can see it's just right there. All right. So what I'm saying is, you can put classes and IDs these things. It's just fine. Right. That's going to save you a lot of time. That's well worth making sure you understand because you're going to be doing multi-line stuff. Any questions? Oh, uh, you can put, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can put it in one big block with quotes too, but the here docs, so you don't have to worry about the quotes. Why do you have uh, three of those? Um, like those are less the, than here, right here? That's how you're designating the PHP, uh, you're telling basically the here doc. So that's, a, that's the syntax that it needs to it interpret that and says, okay, you're doing the here doc here. That's why it's there. <coughs> This is where this little note right here, I talk about um, <coughs> the closing identifier, because that is a gotcha every single time. Inserting variables into a string. Okay, well, we have something like this. Uh, we have favorite animal equals cat, and it says echo my favorite animal, animals are um, favorite animals. Now, 
what we are trying to write here is we are trying to write my favorite animals are cats. That's what we are trying to write. Unfortunately, we didn't do it right. We did this. And so what happens is PHP is going to read this and it's going to look for a variable name of favorite animals, not favorite animal. You see the variable that we created was favorite animal, but what we wrote there was favorite animals with an S. You see the problem? It won't find your variable. It's going to say, I can't find that. Okay. Um, what they're suggest you don't have to do this. I mean, you can basically, like if I just wrote favorite animal and I had it in double quotes and I took that S off, it would find it just fine. It would say my favorite animals are cat, which wouldn't make any sense. But here's what you can do. And this is actually a good thing to do. You can go, my favorite animals are, and then take your variable and put it into curly braces like that. Then you can follow it with that S and it's gonna be just fine because the curly braces are defining that's the variable. So let's take a look at our example again. And uh, I'm gonna do some other stuff here. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna write name. <coughs> Gosh, I can't see my letters here. And I'm not doing this right. Name equals, let's put in my name. And I'm gonna come through here. We don't need this. <coughs> and I can do something like this. So you can kind of see what I did. Uh, say that I'm doing pretty much this right here, okay? Except I'm doing it like that. And when we come here and we run it, it's got star trip, okay? The reason I'm showing it to you in this here doc is because you can do that in these little HTML blocks. And you're gonna find where you're gonna have to inject code into these little HTML blocks to make them show up. So you're gonna do a bunch of processing and you're gonna have to spit out a bunch of text and you're gonna have to have you have to inject a bunch of variables <coughs> into this stuff. That's what I'm trying to point out. Okay? I know it's probably hard to envision some of this stuff now because I'm talking kind of like, oh you're gonna be doing this, but I just want you to kind of understand what these things do. Because it's um, pretty pretty huge. A lot of All this right. stuff reminds me of bash scripting. Um, I think it's a heck of a lot easier than bash scripting, but well, yeah, I think it is easier. But um, some of the syntax is some of the syntax is a little bit like bash scripting. I agree with you, a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is just showing how you can insert um, double quoted strings into uh, into here docs. Okay, here's where I'm, I'm doing something where I insert the name. So that's kind of the example <coughs> I, just, I just gave you. Um, and then you can also do the the stuff. So you get uh, single and double quotes, same type of thing. Okay. Well, here I just did it in quotes, I'm sorry. This is showing how to add a, um, a string just with quotes, and here's how to do it in here. Okay. But what's really nice again with this is if you're doing stuff where you're gonna be injecting a lot of HTML in there and you're gonna have, um, ver uh, not variables, but you're gonna have attributes in there, like this equals that, and quotes and stuff, that can get really hairy. When you start with two quotes on the outer end, and then you try to do the inner stuff, like for example. If I'm sitting over here, and <coughs> let's just, um, just do something simple. Okay, so I have an H1. Um, it's gonna look funny up here, but it doesn't really matter, so give an example. And I'm trying to output this, so um, I'll just do HTML, and I make it equal, and I'm gonna put some double quotes here, and double quotes here, and then I do, really? Um, and then we, we do double quotes on each side, and then I do uh, something like uh, class equals, well, I can do uh, whatever. I can do that, but that's going to completely screw my script up. So then I can do this, and this, I can keep switching single and double quotes around, or I can just take this entire um, thing right here. <coughs> which is this part, X that out. Throw it in there and not worry about it. Is that making sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. 
This <coughs> matters a lot. This is why I'm making so much time because when you get into having an output HTML and you start adding attributes to elements, and you start doing that, you're going to start um, getting into all sorts of problems with escaping quotes and quotes screwing up and this and that. So I'm trying to show you something that is going to solve that. <coughs> okay. We're almost at a break time and we can all wake up. I know the lights out is kind of fun. <laughs> Let's see the sleep. Okay, string concatenation. We looked at this already a little bit, um, but basically it gives you a couple um, goofball things, but basically it's just coming down here and it's pretty uh, simple to see. So you had string equals that. So string equals you can also and then it says string two concatenate variables uh, with string data type. So you can concatenate strings directly, um, which is kind of what I did uh, right here. Okay, so in this particular case, um, I concatenated the string right there, so I have this one. Then I got the concatenate symbol, which is that dot, and I got this string. I got it for me, and I got this string. Okay, so. I got this part. I purposely put the period in there because I wanted to see it. Quote ends, that's the opening, closing, that's concatenation, open, close. That's one way of concatenation, it's just a dot. Alright? You can also do, which you will do a lot, is you can take a variable and you can sometimes you'll be looping through, say, a bunch of names or something like that, and you concatenate all these names together. Boom. Okay? There's another way of doing concatenation. You do dot equals. It just keeps building that string. So the string eventually is going to be, you can also add strings to the dot equals uh, operator. So this is, is basically building this string out. <coughs> you will do this a lot. That's why I'm making this example. Because you're going to be writing HTML and generating it through a loop. In fact, can you say homework too? Because that's where you're going to be doing it. All right? And you're going to have to be doing dot equals, dot equals, dot equals, dot equals. Okay, so. Another way to string concatenation, or you come down here, and it's very simple. Um, you just uh, you can do double quotes and just push them together. Um, you can do this right here. Where's my other one? Oh, I was just doing a comma. I don't know why I was doing a comma. You just do the dot. You can do it like that. You can do it like that. Or you can just put them together. But basically, a string is, let's get rid of all this, and we go, <coughs> that's, oh, so I'm going to just do, I'm going to do exactly what I say never to do, please don't ever do this again. Scott, B equals, I put that space in front of it purposely, but I could have done it here too. Um, and then I just concatenate. Now, if I, didn't, if I wanted that space in there and I wanted to write it this way, um, I could do this and then um, <coughs> run it like that. You would have done the same thing. All right. I will see you at 10 after 7. Whew. I got it for this time. Sorry. <laughs> no,